Welcome to part two in the How to Become a Data Viz Superstar series. In this session, we're going to focus on learning and applying, which means getting really specific on the skills that we want to develop, which will allow us to hone in on the resources and the ways that we can apply those skills thoughtfully to our work. Hope you enjoy. So I did a podcast episode a couple of years ago where these 12 lovely humans volunteered to share their experience of how they each individually learned how to visualize data. And this was very interesting from a number of standpoints. But one interesting thing was it was the same small handful, one or two, maybe three books, that people kept mentioning over and over again. And another theme that came up was that it used to be challenging to find good resources in this space. Right? Data visualization as a discipline is relatively young. Today, the challenge is a much different one. Right? Today, there are so many resources out there that it can be overwhelming. And it's not always a straightforward process to find the ones that are good or the ones that are going to be most relevant to your individual needs. Let's talk about how we can overcome that. And I want to put forth some specific recommendations about how you can learn and apply. And I should preface, these are simple, right? We're not going to cover anything crazy or groundbreaking here, but that's because I think a reminder of the basics can be good as we're setting out to develop our skills and the skills of those around us. We don't have to do it all at once. We shouldn't try to do it all at once. So the first component in that is being really specific on what it is we want to develop. For example, if we're at that ugly graph stage, if we think back to the spectrum that I introduced in our first point, my goal might be simply to integrate our company's branding into how I design our graphs. And by being that specific on what it is I want to develop, I can really hone in on the smaller set of resources that are going to enable me to do exactly that. As I do, one of the things I want to think about doing is apply these new skills or knowledge in low risk spaces first. This might be outside of your day to day job or in small ways in your day to day so that you can use that to understand what's working and iterate. So that by the time you really employ it in your day job, you have a good understanding of how it's going to work and what to do to make it work. And actually, this was one of the main drivers behind creating the Storytelling with Data community, was to create a safe space where people can go to do this sort of practicing and learning and getting feedback which is another critical part of the learning process. When you start doing things differently, solicit input from others. This can be in the community, on the day job, it can be from colleagues or users or potential audience members. And you want to really model asking for feedback in an effective way. So a couple specific tips to offer related to that. So first off, when you ask for feedback, be specific on what you want feedback on. Right? Going back to the first point we covered here, if you really are clear on what it is you want to develop, you can share that with the person or people whom you're soliciting feedback from so that they know to concentrate on that as part of the input that they offer. Also, be upfront with about any constraints that you face are, that are going to be important to know. For example, if you're working on something that has to be turned in that day, it's going to warrant a different level and type of feedback than if you have a broader amount of time to make changes. So after you've done that, right, you're specific on what you want feedback on, upfront about any constraints, then listen without interrupting. 
Maybe you can ask some questions, right, to clarify, but what you really want to avoid is getting into the situation where you're defending the reasons that you made the decisions that you did, because that will shut down the conversation and end your opportunity to get good feedback. So once you've set the stage, let the person who's providing input just talk. And then make sure you take something from what they have offered you and incorporate that into your next iteration. So if you model asking for good feedback in this way, over time, you'll likely find that people will start coming to you for feedback. And then when they do, they will have a good model to work after to be asking you for effective feedback. When people start doing that, then we move into my final recommendation in this specific space, which is look for opportunities to teach others. So when we do that, then we really solidify the learning for ourselves. But you want to be thoughtful and do this in a way that's going to make other people's lives and work easier. As a counter example here, I used to work with a colleague who would share articles, right? Every article he read, he shared. And I think this was coming from a good place, right? He found something that was interesting, thought others might enjoy. But over time, he forwarded so many articles that it got to be overwhelming and actually maybe even formed a little bit of resent in some of the team of either, wow, this guy's really blowing through his work. How does he have time to stay up on top of all of these different things? Or maybe he's not doing his work. He's spending all day reading articles. Not really sure. But in either case, he wasn't being thoughtful of his users, his audience in that case, was forwarding stuff as it came to him. So a more thoughtful way or one way to approach this when you want to share could be rather than send every article as it comes up or every resource as you encounter it, volunteer to lead a session in your weekly team meeting or at an offsite to synthesize and take your colleagues through some of your learning, which can be a way to get to know that stuff better yourself too. Because then you're going beyond just giving feedback about the what and really thinking about how you can articulate the why. Right? So think of how you can target your learning by doing these things. 